Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, gay stuff, and apparently today we are seeing the prophecy being fulfilled. Apparently Ginger is proclaiming herself free and she is totally in on the joke. I guess. I'm all about this reclamation of the free ginger thing. Like, that's her name. That's her likeness. She can make free ginger uh, comments and jokes. Today we're talking about Ginger Duggar, Volo, her new fucking book, and this press tour that she's going on. Because um, holy shit, I was going to film this on Sunday, and then I waited until Tuesday, which is today, and... Like, five other media companies have released their interviews with Ginger. She is on a complete and total press tour, and we are going to be talking about several of those videos, and I will be reacting to them. She landed a BuzzFeed interview, so this is crazy, um, but what it is not is a tell-all like we have all been foaming at the mouth for. I mean, it is her story and her trauma, so maybe I'm an asshole for wanting to uh, know all the juicy details of her life uh we should just respect what she wants to tell us because her trauma and assault is not a juicy deet bad me 10 seconds ago don't let it be you so today we are going to be watching a bunch of the new interviews that just came out today and i'm going to talk a little bit about her book i have not read it yet that is going to be my project for february is trying to finish this book but she is actively speaking out against Bill Gothard, which is incredibly brave, and I am very excited for that, because, I mean, that's the that's the uh, silver lining of all this, right? The other notable thing is that she is, like, very Calvinist now, which I had to do some research on, and I'm still by no means an expert. I'm not even, like, a beginner. Like, I don't know shit, but I will try to <laughs> explain some, some things if I understand them. Yes, she's flaming Bill Gothard, but she's now a flaming Calvinist, so who knows? Look at this comment. Everything she does is tasteful. <laughs> Weird. Nice video for you. NYC. Hi. Nice. It's super. Okay, I gotta <laughs> kick it off here. In a book, it's called Becoming Free Indeed. And it is my story. My journey of disentangling faith from fear. I first had the idea disentangle not deconstruct because that's a huge thing right now with evangelicals is they're mad at people for deconstructing now um which it's not about you so why are you mad but anyway um that's why she says disentangling because she wants people to know she is still a christian the idea to write this book back in 2017 jeremy and i had just attended a conference in big sandy texas for an organization called Institute in Basic Life Principles. While there, I saw dozens of people I'd grown up with, friends who, like me, had come to Big Sandy every year to sit under the teachings from a man named Bill Gothard. But for every old friend that I saw that week, there was one or two who I expected to see who wouldn't show up. In the coming months and years, I'd start to hear stories of those friends and I'd find out that some of them no longer wanted anything to do with Christ or Christianity. I thought that that was going to go, I haven't seen my friends in a while, and I found out that they were rejecting Bill Gothard because he was abusive and made me look into that. Instead, she goes, I found out my friends were leaving Christianity altogether. Yeah, people change, okay? Shit happens. I've been taught about God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. And while that's not my story... I'm a Christian who loves Jesus and wants to follow Jesus. Him. I have, like those friends, rejected much of the teaching I heard from many years. My faith is still intact, but it has changed. Instead of leaving the faith entirely, I've been disentangling it. Shut up! My new book, Becoming Free Indeed, is that journey. My journey of discovery. Of I want to say a lot of people are, like, assuming this narrative that... Ginger is in the cult of Jeremy now and I see what they mean because she is very much like the type of person who wants to be led and she's definitely like just mimicking everything that Jeremy says and I think um in the Allie Beth Stuckey interview that we'll get to um everything is like oh I would bring a certain scripture to Jeremy and he would say 
oh, that's not in the Bible, and he, and he would educate me. So that does sound a lot like he's just brainwashing her or whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't like to use that word, but that's what people are saying. Disentangling my journey of faith. In it, I share stories from my life, stories that nobody saw while the TV cameras were rolling, stories of fear and uncertainty, but also of discovery and hope. I share these stories because I want to be an encouragement to any of you who may be struggling to work through what you were taught while still loving Jesus. Jesus. Really, I wrote this book for any of you who are wanting to honestly examine your beliefs without abandoning God. If you've been hurt by the teachings of Bill Gothard or any religious leader who claimed to speak for God but didn't, I wrote this for you. Okay. When you grow up in a tight-knit community where everyone believes the same things about everything, it can be hard to even consider the possibility that what you were taught may have been wrong. But we all need to, even if it's hard. I wish that the teachers you leaned on when you were younger pointed you to Jesus, but I know that's not always the case. And so I'm hopeful that my story mm. can encourage you not to give up on God, to not abandon Jesus. I know that many of you do not- Whatever you do, do not become an atheist. It is the worst fate of your entire life. I don't believe the same things I do about God and the Bible. But this book is an invitation into my life so that you can see through the highs and lows, through the good and the difficult, and through the changes in what I believe and how I live, Jesus is my strength. He is worthy. I pray this book will help you to see why I follow him. It says co-written by Corey Williams. Um, I would almost rather uh, I would almost rather it have been co-written with Jeremy because you know he's obviously got a uh, big influence on her. No, stop it! I don't want to see him. I wanted to mention that last week, the transformed wife wrote a whole salty blog post about Ginger, and it's really messed up. So. Keep in mind, trigger warning for um, child sexual assault because that's that's unfortunately something that happened to Ginger. So Ginger Duggar threw her parents under the bus and that's the 504 Watertown Express, apparently. Ginger Duggar is coming out with a new book about her harmful and damaging childhood which had lasting effects, which caused her to be fearful and confused who Jesus was. She was interviewed by People Magazine. I took notes so I could make this post true to exactly what she said. She gave no praise or thankfulness to her parents only condemnation in how they raised her. Her sister Jill and her cousin Amy are the only ones who praised her on Instagram. Both of these women also came out against the ways Jim Bob and Michelle raised their children. You know, it really shows her fucking where her head's at because obviously all she cares about is loyalty to uh, the parents. We know that she is an abusive, uh, horrible person. So, wow, don't you hate when your kids um, go no contact with you for abusing them? And I really just don't appreciate this because at no point did Ginger talk shit about her parents. She's always talking about how they did their best and she loves them. Like that was also in the interview. Ginger said with the help of her brother-in-law, who I assume is Derek, she doesn't mean Derek. She actually means Ben. So shows how much you know about the Duggars, Lori. She was able to see clearly many things that were wrong about her childhood. She realized that Bill Gothard was not a Bible teacher. I went to one of his week-long conferences when I was in high school. It was like a breath of fresh air to me. All my friends in high school were fornicating and some were even having abortions. <laughs> Alcohol and drugs were rampant. Most were from divorced homes. Yes, I know about what he has been accused of doing, and he was most likely not the right man to teach the things he did, but the churches were sure not teaching anything to help the youth be protected from the escalating wickedness in our generation. Excuse me? You don't just brush that under the rug there. What? Bill Gothard assaulted more than 30 um, young, young teens, and uh, it's really not something to brush off like that. Now she lives in Los Angeles and called it a busy, awesome place. She doesn't want to shelter her children from other perspectives on life and that God never tells us to do this. If our girls want to go to college, we'll encourage that. See what career they want to do. I'm good with that. That's different than the setting we grew up in. On her Instagram, one woman responded, with all kindness, if it wasn't for your family and your upbringing, you would have no platform. Your family was on TV and attracting a huge following of Christian people 
who wanted to see other wholesome families, whether it was genuine or not. That's what was the appeal. You and your husband have used the popularity to gain interest in your lives and create your new brand. Honestly, you have only become more worldly and distant from your original fan base. Those that cheer you on now are not the people who gave you your platform. They are the same people who mocked your family and all families with deeply held Christian beliefs. They will applaud you moving further away from those values and becoming exactly the same as every other social media influencer who needs constant validation from this worldly culture. The only one who needs to know your story already does. Oh my god. That's a lot of fucking entitlement you got there, buddy. Yes, she was exploited as fuck by her parents and TLC and it was not okay what happened to her. Once again, nowhere does she say that she does not like her family or that she doesn't respect them. Those who cheer you on are not the people who gave you your platform. What the fuck does that even mean? Oh my God. What? Like sometimes it's time to take the modem away. Like you're not allowed on the computer anymore, grandma. So Lori says, I agree with this commenter. Her parents raised their children in the way they were convicted their children should go. Yeah. That's how that works. Everything they taught their children can be backed by scripture. Um, blah, blah, blah. She's just like picking at things that did not even get addressed. Jim, Bob, and Michelle were simply trying to protect their children from this darkening, wicked world and raise their children to live in obedience to God. This is what all of us are called to do. We may have different convictions, but they should all be based solely upon God's words. Margaret Sanger is the one who brought birth control mentality to this land, which has ended the lives of over 64 million unborn babies and has led to rampant fornication, divorce, and even couples deciding to not have children. One of those is not like the other. I respect those who trust God with their wombs. I sure don't condemn them. We must be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves, women. We must raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. What disturbs me most about this interview in Ginger's new book is that she has thrown her parents under the bus in a most public way. The world is rejoicing. They love seeing the downfall of believers. They love that Ginger is now wearing short shorts and living free from the constant constraints her parents put upon her. I am not. It saddens me. Her parents don't deserve this. They should be honored as God commands us to honor our parents. They weren't abusive. They were cheerful and fun. I watched every TV show of theirs. Those children had wonderful lives. Yeah, some of Ginger's thinking was bad. So, most of us had some bad thinking in our childhoods. But it doesn't mean we have to expose it publicly and make a mockery of the way we were raised. Bitch, she was fucking assaulted. What is wrong with you? All right, let's change it up a little bit and watch a video. Uh, yeah, that'll be a fun format. We'll do video, article, video, article, video. <laughs> Let's watch this ET video that just came out six hours ago. When you were addressing your brother's crimes, do you think anyone had any idea that he was living a lie? Was there something in you that was like, this just doesn't seem right? I can't say like, oh, I knew something was off. Like I wasn't close with him for many years, so I- what do you want her to say? Yeah, I had a feeling he was a creep. I can't say like, oh, I saw this coming because I don't think anybody did. If you were to talk to him, what would you say? What? Well, I think that um, <laughs> I will say this is, it's so tough to speak about. My heart really breaks for the victims and their families. But my prayer for my brother is that he will repent mm -hmm. and truly be broken over his son. Have you forgiven him? Oh, no, sins? don't ask that. I think by the grace of God, I can say that I have forgiven him. Ooh. Um, and at the same time, forgiveness and trust are two different things. I'm grateful that he is um, in that place that justice is being oh. served. And I think that that is the best way that I can love at this point. Jo she needs a therapist yesterday. Like, God. Um, and also, this interviewer is not asking appropriate questions. Were you ever a victim of his? Excuse so me? things have been. No! You don't ask. Like, what are you, Oprah? No, do not ask questions like this. Yeah, that's not really something I'm comfortable talking about. Good for you. I'm glad you stuck up for yourself. You said writing this book was the hardest thing that you've ever done. You've lived a life, Ginger. What was the most difficult part for you? What I grew up in was very fear-based, based on superstition, manipulation, control. And so my view of God was warped. Mm -hmm. um, I was promised that if I followed these teachings from Bill Gothard, this man, that my life would be a success and God would bless me. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't follow every principle, Maybe God's gonna kill me in an accident. I'm not sure. It was definitely cult-like. I can't say, oh, it was a cult. I would leave that to the experts. 
smart because she doesn't want to get sued, but still. That's a bold statement. I mean, I I believe that it's true. I, in my soul, that IBLP is a cult, um, and I know why she can't say anything. But there were so many things that um, made me think, okay, this, this reminds me of um, something that's cult-like because it's so hard to leave that community at times. If you violate at any point one of these principles, then that's when disaster will come upon you. Ginger showed me around her LA home and illustrating just how far the former reality star has come, she read from a journal entry written just over seven years ago. This was from September 18th, 2015. Um, last night, I had a good talk with one of my parents. The Lord has been convicting me about modesty. A few times I had on a borderline knee length skirt that would come above my knee when sitting. God brought conviction into my heart in this area, so I asked for help in accountability. I wrote that, you know, probably late in the evening, sitting there thinking, oh no, why did I wear a skirt that would come here when sitting down, as opposed to like an inch longer? So that's it. It was all outward rules based, and I thought, Either God's pleased with me right now because I'm doing this or he's not. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just how I lived my entire life. Ginger ultimately walked away from that way of life in 2017 with the support of her husband of six years, Jeremy. I like that it's like they're talking specifically about like the day she wore shorts. And I do remember people freaked the fuck out. <laughs> with the support of her husband of six years, Jeremy. When Jeremy came on the scene, we had to listen to 60 plus hours of Bill Gothard's teaching before we could really start talking or go further in our relationship. That's interesting. And that was actually really helpful. He said, well, look at what he just said and look at what God's word says. And he didn't grow up in this teaching. And that was so helpful because that started me on the journey of examining the word of God for myself instead of taking one person's opinion. You said that you wished looking back that that you and Jeremy could have had a different type of courtship but despite it all you Excuse still choose me? Him. Oh my goodness every day I would choose Jeremy <laughs> he is the best thing that's happened to me he is so much fun he yeah. keeps me laughing all the time he also has just walked alongside me throughout this journey and it's not been easy for him I'm sure coming into this with all the difficulties I've had to walk through, there have been really hard days. So he's he's been my number one supporter. Thinking about that makes you emotional. It does, because yeah. he's just so sweet. He's yeah. so sweet. What was your biggest fear when you said, um, okay, now I have to tell my family, I, you know. It's like coming what out. What was your biggest fear then? Yeah, I think you never know what kind of reactions you're going to get right. whenever um, anyone has a conversation mm -hmm. with family about <laughs> anything. But I sought to, from the very beginning, share with my parents what I had changed on and why I saw this as something that was important to change on. So whether that was wearing pants, I remember that conversation that I had with them and I wanted to say, I don't see this in the word of God. And then whenever I was writing this book, I was very clear um, that it's not a tell all about my family. I love my family. Mm -hmm. Lori. I'm so thankful for how they sacrificed so much for me. Um, so this story though is my faith journey and I feel a responsibility to as well because I promoted those teachings. So that's what I shared with my family. What was the response that you got? I think that, you know, it's interesting, different ones of them are still in that setting. Yeah. So some were more excited for me to share this story, mm -hmm. um, while others may still agree to disagree. Is there an agree to disagree or is there right and wrong? Oh. I think that in this setting, it is said that there's a very black and white way to do life. But at the end of the day, I do believe that those in the system really want what's best the system. for me. And so it's like they're living their lives and I'm loving them and the same that they would do for me. Do you think your parents are gonna read the book? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I've talked with them and I think that they are. I think that they wanna hear even from my perspective, all of those years that they poured into me and sought to give me their best, you know, that they thought was good for me, had the best intentions because they were promised that this would bring their kids success. I saw that that was their heart all along and they really were loving and faithful parents. We wanted to give our girls um, the opportunity to choose. If they choose to be in the public eye, that's great. 
We'll support them with whatever they want to do, but while they're so young, we're just keeping their keeping their faces off the camera. Okay, so this is the BuzzFeed article. It does paint her in a pretty good light. I, mean, I, I wouldn't expect it not to. So this is by Stephanie McNeil, and this is about the book. Around 2005, a group of TV obsessives on the internet started a forum to discuss a TLC documentary special called 14 Children and Pregnant Again. And if you click the link, it leads you to Tap a Talk. Yeah, so back in the day, Free Ginger was on a totally different website, um, and it was on a small forum, and then eventually it grew to have its own website. Led by parents Jim, Bob, and Michelle, they were strict Christians who followed the teachings of Bill Gothard, a minister who ran a group called the Institute in Basic Life Principles, or IBLP. That The forum's founders named their site Free Ginger after the couple's sixth oldest child, they felt that the then 10-year-old Ginger Duggar's frequent eye rolls and declared love of big cities made her the most likely of the Duggar children to break out from her strict upbringing. So I wonder if they interviewed anybody from Free Ginger because they're notoriously, uh, they don't trust outsiders. Nearly 20 years later, Ginger, now Ginger Volo, has proven them right. In her new book, Becoming Free Indeed, which comes out today, the 29-year-old disavows her parents' beliefs and those of Gothard and the IBLP. The book's title is a reference to the forum, but also a denunciation of the theology she said she felt trapped in for so many years. I'm hoping that in the book I can share how harmful the theology is and hopefully just send out a warning. Volo told me over video chat. All right, fashion, okay. Volo was thrust into the spotlight from a young age and along with her siblings held up as a beacon of Christian girlhood for adults and children alike. According to her parents, that was the reason they offered the lives of Volo and her siblings up for public consumption, to share the biblical principles that govern their lives and to be an example for others or a ministry, as they often were calling it. Um, of course, that dream of proselytizing to the world through television has been irreparably destroyed due to the actions of Volo's oldest brother, Josh. Volo no longer speaks to her brother and hasn't, she said, for more than two years, calling his actions one of the hardest realities of her life. About her other siblings, she's tight-lipped on whether they still follow IBLP theology. I have to let them speak for themselves, she said. He was living a lie, she writes in the memoir. Watching all the pain Josh's sin has caused not only shows me the danger of hypocrisy, but also reveals that external religion, a life of performance, has nothing to do with following Jesus. Josh's crimes also meant that for the first time since childhood, Volo's life is no longer on camera. She reflected on her long tenure on reality television to me, saying that there were times that they were sweet and fun, but it was also hard, and she couldn't say for sure if she would have chosen to grow up that way. It was all she knew. I would not say I'm the best person to do this, she told me. I hate conflict. I think it's very difficult, but at the same time, I wrote a book with my sisters in 2012 that promoted some of his teachings. It's so damaging. If it helps one person to come out of this, it's worth it. All right, Ginger, I see you. To be very clear, Volo isn't denouncing religion. She's still a devoted Christian. Her husband, Jeremy, is currently studying for his doctorate of divinity at California Seminary School and often preaches at a Los Angeles area-based church helmed by a pastor whose views are far from inclusive. Let's check that out. Okay. Yeah, they are really big into John MacArthur, aren't they? Remember, kids, uh, there's more to the story. Much of the book is dedicated to convincing the reader that Christianity, Jesus, and God are great, just not the version of them she was raised to believe in. Though her relationship with her husband and his brand of theology, Volo writes she has found a peace and freedom that she's never felt under Gothard's tutelage and a true relationship with Jesus that she finds personally fulfilling. Her intended audience for the book, besides she says anyone is, who is curious about her life, are other people like her who were raised in the toxic IBL theology. She wants to encourage them not to leave the faith altogether. But eight years on threading my faith, separating truth from error. Bolo strongly criticizes Gothard and the IBLP, describing him as a misogynistic and cruel leader who sought to control every aspect of his followers' lives and blamed them when they faced hardships. Gothard resigned from IBLP in 2014. He did not respond to our request for comment. True righteous living comes from a heart that has been transformed, but Gothard missed this and the consequences were devastating. He told us what clothes to wear, what our homes had to look like and how long our hair needed to be. He gave us lists for how to earn God's favor financially, physically, and relationally, but he couldn't tell us how to truly live a life that honored God. My parents loved me and sacrificed so much for me for all of us, she writes. They invested their time and energy and souls into raising me and my brothers and sisters. Their patience, kindness, and love are things I want to imitate in raising my kids. They pointed me to Jesus, so this is not a book about them. 
I've had a lot of conversations with my family throughout the years about the differences that we have, she said. A lot of times you just agree to disagree because we know we're going to be on different pages at the end of the day. No matter her parents' intentions, it's clear Volo's upbringing left deep scars. Despite her feisty television persona, her, ch- her childhood was filled with deep anxiety caused by Gothard's preachings. What's that called? Religious scrupulosity? All I had to do was deposit the exact lifestyle Gothard advocated and I would withdraw health, money, a wonderful husband, and a bushel of kids. But this cause and effect view was also terrifying because I thought I would experience devastating consequences for any mistakes I made. What did I just say? This led Volo to be terrified, she writes, of doing anything, worried God would smite her for making a bad decision. I don't remember exactly when a desire to please others started to dominate my thinking and decision making, she writes. Perhaps it was when the cameras arrived. I was 10 years old at the time and I realized that millions of people were watching how I lived my life or perhaps I was going to care about the opinions of others and wanted to hide my imperfections. This is all very true. She was exploited by by TLC um, and her parents should not have put her on television like that. She's making sure that she's like, don't worry, I still love my parents and they tried really hard because she's still being influenced by them and perhaps they're putting pressure on her or they are implying that um, she'll be cut off. I don't know. Just think about what happened to Jill. And remember, they did allow her abuser to live in the house and get away with whatever he wanted for several years. So... I wouldn't call them good parents. It kind of changes things, she said. Inside your house, outside, you're being filmed. So you are always on. Even if you're walking through a grocery store, you never know who recognizes you. That's always in your mind. That's true. Even stranger was the fact that many people thought they had an idea of who she was that didn't match reality. Volo told me she heard about the Free Ginger website from friends and family shortly after it was founded, and she was aware of what people were saying about her. In hindsight, she thinks it's ironic how people saw her as rebellious and eager to break away from her family's strict guidelines. It was the total opposite, she said. In reality, Volo's childhood and young adulthood were times of an almost obsessive level of obedience. In Becoming Free Indeed, she describes anxiety so crippling that she was afraid to join her family to play sports at church and developed an eating disorder after over an obsession with appearing perfectly thin. She had little experience in the outside world or even interacting with people outside her family or church. After she married Jeremy and moved in with him to Laredo, she realized she didn't know how to be on her own or even who she was. Simple interactions like meeting with a church member for lunch left her sobbing with fear. She was completely unprepared for life outside the Duggar bubble. They're uh, pissed. They're uh, pissed. When you live in a community as insulated and isolated as mine was, you assume the way you live is normal and right, she writes. My first year of marriage was the first time I formed friendships with people I wasn't related to, people who were not like me in many ways. I experienced a lot of anxiety. We've discussed, like, just fading off into the distance, into the background, eventually, she said, but it's clear that Volo's new life feels right for her. It may not be what those on the Free Ginger Forum pictured for her all those years ago, but it has been transformative, and maybe that's enough. I think there are endless possibilities for the future future, which I'm just excited about, she said. I feel like every day I'm discovering new hobbies and passions and things that are just fun to do. I think it's hard to say where and what the future will bring. It's just very freeing. I really want to know how Free Ginger feels about this article. Watching things come full circle. Next video. I was raised on TV and grew up in the public eye since I was 10 years old. You talk about growing up in a fishbowl. I was struggling with a lot of fear and anxiety. Where are the Duggars? There was a lot of fear, rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Women weren't allowed to work outside the house. Mm -hmm. No loans, no pants, Mm -hmm. no rock and roll. Yeah. The family, a source of fascination, but off camera, Ginger says she suffered from extreme anxiety. I would say looking back at my younger self, I had such a sweet childhood. And at the same time, sure you did. I see, I didn't know why I was struggling. This is going to cause shockwaves amongst uh, a lot of fundies. I'm just going to say it. This is going to be very divisive. Aspects of her childhood. I remember a story being told to me of a young man who died in a car accident because he was listening to rock music. And somebody in the car turned on, like, even Christian music with drums. And I thought we're for sure gonna die. Like, we're gonna get in a car accident and die. I was like shaking in the back seat, crying. Because of the drums. Because of the drums. Because when you God. think that you don't know what God expects of you, that's just so damaging. Fuck Her new Bill book, Becoming Free Indeed, my story of disentangling faith from fear, chronicling her departure from the strict Christian teachings, she says, this caused her crazy. to suffer from perfectionism, eating disorders, and panic attacks. It was very destructive because it was based on fear superstition, manipulation, and control. And so 
I needed to be freed from those things. When I look at your heaven, Ginger wow. says her husband Jeremy, a graduate student in divinity, helped her see there could be another way. I met Jeremy and it really challenged my perspective on, okay, you can still be a Christian who loves God and glorifies God, but you don't have to live by all these man-made rules to be okay and to be safe. The couple have two daughters whose privacy they protect, not showing them on TV. They didn't always do that, media. remember. Do you plan to have 19 children? Yeah. No, well. I think we're happy with our girls right now. And uh, we'll see. We might go for number three. Not yet. But this, <laughs> this okay. sounds like family planning that involves birth control. It, yeah, so that's something that um, we talked about, Jeremy and I talked about before we were married. And so I was just examining the Word of God. Again, like I want everything to go back to my foundation for life. And then I realized, okay, just because kids are a blessing from God doesn't mean that you have to have as many of them as possible. The Duggar family, devoted Shook. followers, the Institute, organizing family conferences like this one in Big Sandy, Texas. I want to see this, where they got this footage. Values. Nightline was there in 2011. Oh. Let me show you here. Yeah. Ew. Along with the Duggar family. I remember looking Bates. around going, what is going on here? Because it was so gender segregated. Gender right? segregated. The boys would go outside. That's true. The girls yeah. would be told that housework was the only thing they could do. Yeah, so when you're asked what you want to be, it's so simple. Everybody wants to be a wife and a mother, which is, it's not a bad thing. Being a wife and a mom, I will say that. It's, it's, I'm a wife and a mom, and I love it. Being in that setting, like, you, you would never think it was okay to do anything other than that. Ginger now renouncing many of those Ginger discovers and feminism. the man who she says was behind them. I thought that his words were the words of God, and it wasn't until I got older I stopped and started to examine his teachings. I mean, you refer to him almost as a false prophet. I would say so. He's definitely Ooh. a false prophet, false teacher. Gothard resigned in 2014 after sexual harassment allegations. What was your emotional reaction to those accusations? Oh, my, my heart was just broken, just thinking about the trail of hurt. Gothard was never charged, and a civil lawsuit against him was dropped. In a statement to ABC News, he called the accusations false, saying the thought of harassing someone is totally foreign to my nature. It would never have happened. What? Ginger says her parents... <laughs> I don't even, like... I don't even know what abuse is. How could I possibly... <laughs> I cannot believe this. ...still ascribe to those teachings. Are you estranged from your parents? No, I still talk to my parents. I just talked to my mom like a day ago. And so I'm really grateful for my parents. Lori. To give me the best life as any parent would. You do what you think is best for your kid. Sorry, I just, it's hard to talk about. They need to stop asking her about this. My heart just breaks for the victims and their families. When the sentencing came down, you spoke up and condemned your brother's behavior mm -hmm. by calling it a horrific evil. Mm -hmm. Have you talk to him since he why would she was incarcerated no i haven't <laughs> yeah, that. throughout her journey ginger says she hasn't rejected her faith my relationship with god is what matters the most to me and i want people who have walked through hardship and pain to be able to come to the place where they see that you don't have to reject your faith because you've been harmed by by it within it but you can separate truth from error don't leave christianity stronger Ginger is now building her own family on her own terms. She even wore pants to our interview, something she could wow. never have imagined in her childhood. I want to live my life in a way that glorifies God. And you can do that by wearing pants. You can do that by wearing shorts. It's hard for some people to come to that place, but wow. it is much easier to ride a bike in pants. Wow. I thought I had more articles and videos. Um, I don't really want to watch the 14 minute people one. I'm sorry. I just think this would be a lot more interesting. Um, another side note, I have begun preliminary research on Ali Beth Stuckey for a video. I don't hardly have anything. Um, what I do have is a bunch of clips of her talking to Girl Defined. Um, and I saved those from the last episode. Uh, I was not aware, um, 
that she's a Calvinist. She had a bunch of videos about like, do I believe in predestination and all these things? And it actually makes sense that Ginger and her would have this interview if they're both Calvinists, because even amongst Christians, it's kind of a controversial belief. Um, well, maybe not that controversial. Um, according to the Leaving Eden podcast, I found out that 30% of Protestants identify as Calvinists, um, and it's a belief system that can be seen in many denominations. So I just thought that was interesting because <laughs> I didn't know there were that many. But yeah, so we're going to skip through this and watch a few clips of it because it is very irritating anytime Allie says anything. You know Ginger Volo from reality TV. She is Wow, a freedom fighter? Of... Bitch, how fucking dare you put that on your shirt? Okay, I'm already mad! Free Indeed is the story of my faith journey. I grew up, grew up under some harmful teachings Wait, that on. threatened to leave me. Okay, we got what appears to be Guns and Roses over here on this top corner and a shadow box with a sneaker. And then down here, we've got Michael Jordan from Space Jam. I only noticed because I painstakingly put shit in my background for people to notice, so... Ginger is the dogger daughter I think that looks the most like Michelle. And once you understand that, you can't unsee it. I don't, I don't know who Bill Gothard is. I'm sure a lot of my wow. audience does, but... You really couldn't have looked up who Bill Gothard was? Like, you were such a bad interviewer. Well, I probably don't. Can you just tell us what you mean by that? Yeah, Bill Gothard came on the scene in the 1960s and 70s whenever um, sex, drugs, and rock and roll were um, a big concern it's for weird parents. weird hearing her say yeah. that. And he came on the scene saying that he had the answers to life's problems. And he came on saying that if parents followed these principles that he would lay out, that their life would be a success and God would bless their life. But if they didn't, then their life would be one disaster after another. And, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So he set up all of these guidelines that he thought would keep kids from getting into sin. And parents were looking for answers and thought, well, of course, everybody wants a black and white answer of what that looks like. So he started hosting seminars that filled stadiums across the country. And many people came from all different backgrounds and filled up those stadiums. I wonder if Bill Gothard was trying to compete with James Dobson or did they coexist at the same time? And then he started after that um, many conferences and programs for kids. People from all different countries would come in to attend. And what were some of the rules or principles that he told parents, you have to abide by these if you want your kid to grow up to, you know, be on the straight and narrow? I think some of the more outward stuff, I mean, a lot of it, most all of it was outward, but it would be like, if you go into debt at all for any reason, that God's going to bring destruction on you. If you listen to drums in yep. music... Wow. Then in the wisdom booklets that were the uh, homeschooling program, they would have specific, um, very specific things that they would say that the women had to do, like specific hairstyles, clothing. Like, if this is your face shape, you should dress like this. Like, it really was some extracurricular uh, control going on. Those types of things is what he based his teaching on. Yeah. And, and also, allegedly, it's based on the things that he found attractive. It, as a kid growing up in that, it was interesting. I really thought that God was either pleased with me because of what I did, um, if I followed all the guidelines, and if I didn't, I really thought that God was just out to get me. Even as a believer, once I was saved at the age of 14, I knew the true gospel was not by salvation by works. Salvation by works. That was a little uh, like dig at the Catholics there. Did you notice that? But the way that played out, um, Bill Gothard multiple times would give a scenario and say, well, before you come to Christ, do X, Y, Z. And it was totally wrong. Yeah. But I never said that salvation was by works, but I viewed God in that way. Like he's either pleased. In her denomination, they want to make sure that you know that you are saved by God's grace alone and that nothing that you can do will ever, ever be pleasing to God. And so 
there's no point in trying to do works because it's all selfish because you're trying to get into heaven. So therefore there's no point in trying to do the good works. And it's only through God's grace. I have an opinion on whether or not that's valid because I'm not a Christian, but that's what she's talking about. It was a, it was a subtle dig and it makes sense that she would say that to Ali Beth and not good morning America, because that's a doctrinal argument. It's not something that would that anybody who wasn't into Christianity would even understand or care about. Or not pleased with me based on an, a secondary issue, like a, a standard that yeah. this man set up. Yeah. My parents um, got into Bill Gother. They were introduced to it as a young couple. And I think since this was all I knew, um, this is how I viewed the world around me, was I thought other people outside of Gothard's circle just didn't know the truth. They didn't have the handle on truth and their life wasn't going to be blessed because of it. So I was like, you're just waiting for a disaster to strike in their life because Mm -hmm. they're outside of this. And so I would have pity for anyone who had not been exposed to his teachings. And that's how you feel about Calvinism now, ironically. And at the same time, I would say the theology of that and being in a place where we thought, okay, well, we have to start a home church because no one is believing the exact same things we do in every place. So we can't go to a normal church, so-called normal. Um, we need to start our own. So we would watch a lot of Bill Gothard's seminars. Um, he has like 60 plus hours of these specific seminars to like learn his teachings. We would watch those a lot of Sundays for our um, sermon. Mm-hmm. That's something I had not um, gotten confirmation on. So that's very interesting that they were, in fact, just playing Gothard tapes as their church services. I wonder if they did um, communion or anything like that. I've, I'm sure they would have for special occasions. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Jim Bob ever like considered himself the leader of, of home church and would like speak. I'm very curious. Oh, that is the teaching I grew up under. I would go to his conferences, his seminars, his girls' retreats, um, yeah. all of that I attended. So I knew very well where the teachings came from. And I knew B- Bill Gothard personally as well. And the story, which I did not know, that someone stole your diary. Wow, Ali, you didn't know because every snarker ever knew that. So what does that say about our community? <laughs> When you were little from your house, tried to sell it for $100,000. I just can't imagine as like a little girl. I mean, I'm sure there was nothing really, but like, you know. Oh, there was something in there, Ellie. Now I feel like I can't trust a lot of people. Talk about how in the second chapter, I guess the combination of kind of feeling like you're in a fishbowl and then also a lot of the principles that you have been raised with, this kind of legalistic, if you don't do this, this bad thing will happen to you, created just like a spirit of fear in you. That's how you characterize yourself primarily. Yeah, it's called spiritual abuse and spiritual trauma, and it's very normal, and um, you can seek treatment for it, and you don't have to go on Ali Beth Stuckey's channel. What were you but fearful of? Just kind of everything? Fearful of everything around me, and my view of God, I think, at that point was one based on um, stepping outside of the box. Like, if I step outside of this box, God's going to, he's going to take his hand off of me or smite yeah, me. Yeah. I can't step outside of this box of authority at all or I'm opening myself up to the devil's attacks. So I viewed life like that. And it wasn't until the age of 14 where I was- That's gotta be awful. I'm so sorry to anybody who has um, religious trauma because that's gotta be really terrible. And I'm proud of her for speaking up. I think it's very interesting that she's a Calvinist and I don't know how that's gonna work out for her, but um, I'm proud of her for speaking out. But at that point, the Lord opened my eyes to show me that I can't perform and I can't continue to try to please God by my good works. And so I was so broken. I I was like a good kid in a sense. Uncondit. What is it called? Uh, Yeah. Total depravity. Total depravity. Unconditional election. What is the L? Limited atonement. It's like irresistible faith or something. It's where you can't can't resist it and then perseverance of the saints anyway calvinists are silly i just love them it's like i didn't get in trouble a lot i didn't push you know any Mm -hmm. boundaries um the lord just exposed to me my heart and i've been trying to like read the bible trying to do all these things but i had no heart for it i i didn't love god so the lord changed my heart at that age and then 
those years following, my love for God grew and my fear of death vanished. But what happened was my perspective on why those fears were there, um, fears of like, okay, should not, should I now stay at home and read my Bible yeah. and go out to play sport with my siblings, even though I already read my Bible for like an hour that morning, I would start to become terrified thinking, I don't know what God expects of me. I mm-hmm. want to honor you, God, but what do you expect of me? Why can't I figure this out? So I remember multiple times because of the umbrella of authority Bill Gothard would teach, like you have to stay under your parents' authority. They are basically like, I guess you'd say almost like a priest, right? Like they're, you go to them to confess every little sin, every little detail of your sin, um, and then God will forgive you. So Mm -hmm. interesting. um, I, I kind of had this perspective of like, okay, well, if I think I'm supposed to stay home and read my Bible, if I think I'm supposed to fast today, which would come up like, Often I yeah. kept thinking, I don't know, God, what do you want? What do you want? I would go to my mom and dad and say, like, they, they noticed, like, why aren't you going to broom ball? It was my favorite sport. And I finally told him, I was like, I don't, I think I might be supposed to ho- stay home and read my Bible. Like, I don't know what to do. My dad would pause and he said, no, I want you to come with us. That totally took away that fear because I thought now I'm obeying my authority. So God's going to protect me. I'm not going to die in a car accident on the way there yeah. because I'm, um, my dad gave me permission. Compulsions. It's really sad. Because it felt like it was such a long season. Uh, looking back, I just remember multiple times. Like my grandma was always about going out to thrift stores and I would want to go with her. But then I would be like, no, maybe I should stay home because I have a feeling. Mm-hmm. Everything. You know, like I lived by my emotions. You have an anxiety disorder, Ginger. God which is not healthy because I'm not going to sit here for three hours every day reading my Bible because that's just not healthy. And so um, I think some of that, like my siblings probably would look back at that and say, oh yeah, we remember Ginger in that season. Yeah, um, I was just trying to be like all spiritual, even with my words, I would try not to laugh because I thought, oh, maybe that's not so spiritual. Mm. And it was this Whatever is a revelation is what I tried to act out and live. Um, and looking back, I'm like, oh, man, I would tell my younger self, like, OK, you're not even living out the word of God because I don't I'm not doing the one another's. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm just sitting at home, how am I going to share the gospel with my friends at Broomball if I'm sitting at home reading my Bible 24 seven? And not speaking to my siblings, not helping with housework, whatever it is, you know, it's not what God has called us to do. Yeah. And I could see that fear would kind of motivate you so scared to fall outside of like God's favor or what you believed was like the tiny circle of acceptability to God. The word of God is very clear when it speaks about um, is it- things that are even sinful, right? And I would think, okay, well, is going to burn ball bad because you have unbelievers there? Or maybe I'm going to talk to someone who says bad words. Maybe my mind will be polluted. But at the same time, I think once I realized who God is, that he is a loving and kind savior, and he does punish sin because he's a holy God. But as a believer, when I come to him and say, um, like, Lord, forgive me for this sin, like that's how he forgives my sin. It's not by me doing these acts, thinking I'm going to gain favor with God or reading the Bible is going to make me closer to God because of what I've done, Mm -hmm. not because God changing me from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And so that was the perspective that took me many years to figure out, but it just happened by reading the word of God and by being in a solid church that taught me that. Limited atonement, the L in tulip means that people who are not elect, who are not chosen by God from before the beginning of time, if they are not specifically chosen by God, they are not saved and they are not going to heaven. And God's grace was only for those people that he chose to save. So keep that in mind when she says she's free. I was in the same church for many years uh, with my family and I did not leave until like two weeks before um, I was married. And part of that was due to the authority structure. I felt like I would have been sinning if I did anything different. 
and I probably, looking back, I probably could have asked my parents, hey, could I go over to my brother-in-law and sister's church, which is an awesome reformed church and solid preaching. Hey! But I just, another another layer of that was like, am I going to be under God's authority and protection um, or am I dishonoring God by, by doing that? Um, because adult kids, even women, can't ever have a job outside the home. Oh, okay. You can't, um, like... Well, you can't work outside the home, but you can't live outside of the home either. Until you're married. Until you're married, mm-hmm. then that transfers to your husband. Even if you're 40. No, even if you're 40. Jana. You, you should remain at home. And mm-hmm. otherwise, it's this umbrella of authority that Bill Gothard taught mm-hmm. is that God is here. He's up here. And then your parents are here and you're below that umbrella. If you come out from under their authority by moving out of the home, by getting a job, then you're opening yourself up to Satan's attacks because you don't have an umbrella. Yeah. And I'm sure Jeremy played a big part in that because he didn't come from your same background, right? Mm -hmm. Jeremy grew up in a reformed home. His dad is a faithful pastor, um, loves the Lord. And so he was raised in that. He did have some years where he... Um, kind of went off in, in, in the college party scene, lived his life like that, but he knew the gospel and the Lord never let him enjoy any of his sin. So Jeremy came to know the Lord um, and that as soon as he was a believer, it was like, oh, I know all these answers because yeah. I've been in solid church since I was a baby. I- it's okay that he attacked a cop and had premarital sex, okay? Because he was in a good church. A setting where... They take the word of God um, and hold it up as the highest authority. And man's traditions and opinions are not important it, on like these issues where the Bible is silent, they're silent. And when yeah. scripture speaks, they speak. Ben and Jeremy, like I saw Ben's family did things differently than us, my brother-in-law. And then Jeremy, when he came on the scene, we started to discuss a lot of these seminars when we were engaged, because my dad said, okay, well, you know, I want you to listen to all these seminars before you get engaged of Bill mm. Gothard's. Wow. 60 plus hours. Jeremy was, he started to roll through them. And it was then that he noticed, oh, wait, wait, what, what do these people believe? Because wow. on the out, it looks like Christianity, um, as he would know it, like, it's like, oh yeah, you can do a couple things differently. Like maybe you hold to courtship or maybe you wear dresses, but like you love Jesus. Yeah. So that's a thing. But once he started to realize the why behind why I did everything that I said was a conviction from scripture, he began to pause these videos. We started watching them together on, um, on like zoom because we were long distance and the Lord used that in such a good way because I was able to sit down play a clip from Bill Gothard where he would say, okay, man does not live by bread alone. And then he would say the next verse, so therefore we need more fiber in our diet. We need all this help. I I know exactly what she's talking about because there's all kinds of random ass sections in these wisdom booklets that like, they'll be like, oh, they mentioned math uh, during the creation of the ark. So we're going to turn that into your math lesson. And then that's why these people were educationally neglected. But things and he would like jump off on this crazy rabbit trail talking about why we need this specific kind of bread, this specific bread mixer to make our lives pleasing to God. Wow. So I was like, why didn't I ever realize this? Hmm. Why? Just seeing this now. Because you were in survival mode and you couldn't think of anything else, Ginger. Don't feel bad. Every single year. And then we started going through every area. Like if it was modesty, um, he would go down to some really terrible details we won't talk about. But with that time of the month, this single dude who never what? had kids, never married, oh. would go into details Bill about. Bill Gothard never had kids and never got married? Never. Allie, everybody knows that. You're the one that doesn't know that. Like, come on. It's crazy. So he had all the answers to everything, how you were supposed to live your life down to every medical issue that he thought could be caused. Like if you have cancer, maybe you did this. If you have this issue, I have a cure for it. So I started to realize when we were going through those that, wow, this, this guy is not a Bible teacher. Like this is so shocking to me to even question it because Bill Gothard would even say of himself, he would say, 
once I teach you these um, principles, it would have been better for you not to hear these principles than to hear it and depart from it. Wow. So that's some apostate shit right there. Right the fuck there. It's like a cult. God, I mean, like, it's like a cult leader. Yeah, it is. I, you know, I can't say like, oh, it was a cult, but I, I can say, say it, Ginger. I'll say it for in, you. It's a nature. cult. Like, it took me so many years to um, realize that God was a good and loving Heavenly Father, not waiting to punish me at every turn for some sin. Maybe I forgot to confess a bad attitude. I may have not confessed to God. He wasn't going to just kill me because of that. Right. PatriotMobile.com slash Allie or what? Eight Patriot Mobile. Didn't that turn out to be a fucking scam? Seven eight. Patriot. Patriot Mobile. Well, you don't want the government knowing out. what you did on January sixth. Get yourself some Patriot Mobile. So, how do you explain to someone? Because I see the difference, but maybe there are some people wondering this between kind of what we see in the whole deconstruction movement deconstruction. versus how you describe it, which is disentangling. I have my own idea of how I could. How dare you out, be an I'm atheist? You, you have to stay a Christian forever. That. Yeah, you might be able to say it better than I do, Allie, but I will say from my perspective, it has been disentangling has, is totally different than deconstruction because sadly I see a ton of people deconstruction, deconstructing like Joshua Harris has started this deconstruction starter pack. Yeah. And it's so sad. It uh, Deconstructing is like when you rip everything apart, tear everything down to the studs, and you never build it up again in your... Maybe sometimes you tear it down and you realize that you didn't want it or the foundation is full of termites and you should just build a different house. Not everybody's going to leave an abusive high control group and then go right back to a different one like you, Ginger. Sometimes people realize that they are enjoying their life as a non-believer. Your faith and it's like, we're done. Like I've, I've ripped down all the things that I thought were true, but disentangling has been... A process that it does take so many years. I think even some days where I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, like I'll, I'll be hit with thoughts about like what I used to believe and think, okay, well, I know what God's word says. So it's taken years of me saying, okay, well, this is what God's word says. Sounds like and deconstruction. So I'm believe this. Even if I was twisted, warped view of the Bible for so many years from what Bill Gothard said this verse means, from what this other church said this verse means, but going back to the context, seeing the word of God for what it truly is, walking through the Bible, just verse by verse with him preaching, teaching, all of that has helped me to take apart what's true from what's false, separate, like if your hair has putty in it, you can just cut your hair off or you can take the time to slowly yeah. pick out the putty and get rid of people the are being and abused hair. and people are dying. That's kind of like this weird, it's a funny little um, analogy, but that's yeah. what I feel like I've been doing throughout these years. Like um, even in parenting now, like I have two daughters and it's interesting with them. I can fall into this. Well, I have the answer for everything. And then I realize no, I, I have to rely on the spirit of God. It's terrifying raising kids when you don't have a system. Whenever it's so easy to think, oh man, I was raised in Bill Gothard's system. So you just hit Let them. Let me just lean in on that. Okay. But at the end of the day, it's not going to lead to a good place. Yeah. And so I know that. And it's going back to the word of God, relying on the Lord um, to lead me and to carry me through because it's so easy to like put all of your trust in a man like I kind of did for Bill Gothard. I, I and consider Jeremy. him like a grandfather to me. And oh, whenever what? something like that shakes you, I remember when I got the call talking about him, I was like, man, like how did he fall? And then, then I didn't believe it for many years that he actually did. And, and, and what, what happened there? Back. You don't he know? He was accused by more than 30 women of um, misconduct um, with him. And he initially said, well, maybe I had handled some things wrong. Hmm. So I was so shook by that because I was like, how can he be what I thought was more of a prophet from God? How can he say this and let us down? Yeah. So those types of things would shake me. But once I realized, okay, there will be many people who come in speaking words that seem good, like that seem true. They try to base it on the Bible, but ultimately at the end of the day, I have to go to the word of God for truth. And I can only, um, even though God has like given us teachers and preachers around us, um, 
at the end of the day, my faith and my trust is unwavering because it's in Jesus Christ and um, God's word is true. And that's what I cling to even in the hardest days. And it has taken many years for me to come to the place where I say, okay, I fully understand, not fully understand, but like the love of God for his children is there. Mm -hmm. I'm not like under this, there's so much grace that I was missing for all of those years being raised in Bill Gothard's teaching. So this disentanglement has just been me seeing. Sometimes you got to give yourself grace, Ginger. Okay, so here we go. Yep, there we go. Boom. Justification is another one, too, in Calvinism. All right, cool. Got it. Gotcha. You love Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed today's video, I will be trying to read through Ginger's book. I probably will not be as fast as some other channels, so don't worry. Go ahead and listen to them. Not a tell-all, definitely about her disentangling. I'm not sure if she's going to name drop her new denomination or if it's just going to be kind of left up to the reader. Um, I don't know how the rest of the media is going to take it. I don't know how the rest of her family is going to take it. Amy will probably say something. <laughs> I will see you guys next week, and I love you very much. Remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Check me out on social media, the Patreon, if you want to support me, and also get on the Discord. Um, I do have a stream coming up in two days on the Discord, um, and that is only $3. What else? Um, yes, go check out the stream with Jordan and McKay, and um, go check out my link tree on Instagram, and um, remember to... Um, uh, drink water and be easy on yourself. It's okay. N none of us were asked to be born. Okay, so let's let's be cool about it. And who is Sigmund? She's cool. She's a communist. You know, don't you want to be like her? I sure do. I'll see you guys later. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>